everyone, today's video we're talking about the most common triggers for Meniere's disease and today we're talking about sodium and salt. So if you have Meniere's disease that is not stable, meaning you still have episodes of vertigo and dizziness and you've got tinnitus and sometimes it gets so bad you have nausea and vomiting, this video is for you and again it's part of a series on the most common triggers for Meniere's disease so now let's get into sodium and salt. So again, Meniere's disease, right? Endolymphatic high drops. It's basically swelling in the inner ear. Your inner ear gets crushed from the inside out. Sometimes people call it endolymphatic high drops. Sometimes it's called cochlear high drops. But essentially what happens, because it's your inner ear, you can get a variety of different symptoms, such as tinnitus, hearing loss, episodes of vertigo, or kind of chronic dizziness, instability, ear fullness. There's a whole range of symptoms that can occur. But for people whose Meniere's is not stable, they can have these attacks, they can kind of come and go, they can be unexpected. And basically people with Meniere's uh, have a pretty terrible quality of life because they don't know when they're going to be debilitated. So sodium is one of the known triggers for these attacks. Now a low sodium diet is something that people usually get recommended when they see their ENT, but I have to tell you that Sometimes uh, that's not necessary because some, for some people it doesn't do anything. But why would it do something? Why would sodium be a trigger for Meniere's? Well, if you can imagine if we've got this confined space, right? And anything that causes swelling inside that confined space is going to cause more crushing of the vestibular system and your auditory system. And you got to remember that anywhere sodium goes, that's where water goes. So the idea is that by ingesting beyond a certain threshold of sodium, you're going to cause more water and fluid retention and that can cause an exacerbation of the symptoms. Now, I can tell you plenty of people over the years that I've treated can trace back their Meniere's attacks to eating out. They had a really salty food and they ate out and within an hour or two hours or even eight hours, they're on the floor vomiting and spinning because it caused a flare-up. So that's kind of one reason why sodium is a problem. Now, a second reason is is sodium influences or increases this thing called T helper 17. Now, T helper 17 is an immune system cell, and essentially sodium activates those cells, and they're part of your immune system, and you need them, but I always tell people TH17 is like, you know, the, that xenomorph from the alien movies, right, that acid. TH17 is serious stuff. It is the probably the primary thing that causes tissue damage uh, in people uh, when it gets activated. It's TH17. So you don't want to activate that, right? And sodium beyond a certain level can do that. Now I keep saying beyond a certain level because that level is sort of individualized per person. Some people can't deal with any sodium at all besides just kind of what naturally occurs. They add any kind of salt to their food, it flares them up. It tells you that their Meniere's is unstable because, you know, if I go out to eat and have a little bit of salt, it shouldn't do anything. But if your Meniere's is not controlled and it's very unstable, then the sodium can do that. Now, it would be good to know, right, if your T helper 17 was already high, like how much sodium could I get away with? Well, how would you find that out? Well, one of the things that I do is I do what's called lymphocyte immunophenotyping, uh, and that looks specifically at immune system cells. It's kind of like getting in your immune system fingerprint, and we can look at someone's TH17 cells and see if they're normal, low, or high, and that gives us a pretty good idea, at least to start, whether how much sodium they can, they can tolerate or not. Now, what do you do if sodium is a trigger for you? Well, I would suggest not ingesting excess sodium, like whatever naturally occurs in your food, like the vegetables and things, that's all I would do. I wouldn't be adding. Now, some ENT, I shouldn't say some, most ENTs will tell you a low sodium diet. Well, what is that? Well, a low sodium diet is basically 1,000 to 1,500 milligrams total per day of sodium. Now, all you gotta do is grab for that salt shaker and you do very much of this and you're going to hit that limit pretty quickly. So for a lot of people with Meniere's, it, sodium restriction does help, but it doesn't stop everything. And I guess that's the last thing I want to tell you, the last point, is that if you're a person for whom sodium and salt is a trigger and the low sodium diet is appropriate for you, it's probably not going to be the only thing you need to do to get full control of your Meniere's because Almost all Meniere's patients have an underlying immune system problem. And I got a lot of different videos on that. But basically, it could be an autoimmune problem you didn't know you have. It could be an inflammatory problem coming from somewhere else. But the diet I just mentioned, that low sodium diet, you know, that's not going to be the only thing you need to do. There's a lot more that can be done and probably should be done to really get to the bottom of your 
Meniere's, right? So uh, there's testing that I like to do. I mentioned earlier lymphocyte phenotype testing. I like to do multiple tissue antibody testing. There's basically four metabolic priorities I look at for all my Meniere's patients. And so I guess my, my last thing I want to say to you is make sure you're working with someone that understands that sodium can be a problem, but may not be a problem, and certainly isn't the only thing you need to do. Some doctors are going to tell you, well, you know, there's nothing else you can do. You know, like just limit caffeine, limit, limit sodium, uh, and you'll be fine. Or that's all you can do. And that's just not true. I just got to tell you, that's not, what the, that's not what the research literature says. That's not what my 20 plus years of experience says. So work with someone that has a little more open mind. Uh, sodium is a trigger because it retains water. It increases TH17. It causes fluid shifts. And we just don't want to do that. And if sodium's a trigger for you, it means your Meniere's is not stable and you got some work to do. So make sure you find someone that can do that work with you. Okay, see you next time.